Hey everyone, comparing the new 2021 MacBook Pro to the 2021 iPad Pro seems like a pretty strange comparison for a lot of reasons. I mean, look at their pricing, their target audiences, and just the devices themselves. They are incredibly different pieces of tech. That being said though, they are still worth comparing. They have many similarities, many ways they work together, and many reasons why somebody would choose an iPad Pro over a MacBook Pro, and vice versa. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the place to learn all the creative skills you've always been interested in. The first 1,000 people who join Skillshare with my link in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Explore your creativity today. So first off, let's talk about pricing. A base model 14 inch MacBook Pro with a 512 gigabyte SSD is $2,000 US, while the base model 11 inch iPad Pro with 128 gigabytes is $800, or a more comparable 512 gigabyte model is $1,100. Then add on top $129 for the Apple Pencil, which is definitely an important accessory, and the Magic Keyboard for $300 to make it more of a laptop experience. And for the bigger 12.9 inch 512GB iPad Pro, if you want something a little bit larger, it is $1877 US with those accessories included. So either way from a pricing perspective, the iPad Pro with the same amount of storage and all the accessories is still cheaper than the MacBook Pro. Even the bigger 12.9 inch iPad, not by much, but still cheaper. Okay, let's talk design. The biggest difference between these two devices. The new redesigned MacBook Pro is absolutely beautiful. It has this more industrial look, it feels incredibly well built and premium, it's fairly thin, doesn't weigh too much, and fits easily in most backpacks or smaller bags, no problem. While the iPad Pro feels lighter than the MacBook, it is about the same thickness with the keyboard case on, pretty much. But the more compact form factor makes it easier to bring along for work on the go. The iPad is just much easier to bring around to coffee shops, work, school, the park, or just around your own home. It also has the power to detach from the Magic Keyboard and can be used handheld for watching movies in bed, reading, playing games, or drawing with the Apple Pencil. It can be much more comfortable to use sometimes than the MacBook Pro. But what the MacBook Pro does have is a much better display overall. We're talking a 120Hz mini LED display that's 14.2 inches, has 1000 nits of brightness or 1600 nits of peak brightness with excellent, beautiful accurate colors, it's ridiculously sharp, and it's just on a whole different level. Now it's not completely fair to compare this display to the 11 inch iPad Pro's LCD display, but even the 12.9 inch iPad Pro's display is not as good as this MacBook panel. It is absolutely incredible. And those blooming issues the 12.9 inch iPad Pro's mini LED display has are just not present here at all. It is a much better panel, it is one of the best displays I've ever seen. It basically takes the Pro Display XDR minus some of that resolution, adds on 120Hz and shrinks it down into this form factor. It's just absurdly good. Combine that display with the crazy speaker system inside this MacBook Pro and it is an amazing experience. That's a great, great, great this for my key, key, key. But unlike the iPad Pro's seamless symmetrical display, this display has a notch up top, which houses a bunch of sensors and a solid 1080p camera. While the iPad does have center stage though, so if you're in a video call, you're moving around, it keeps you in frame all the time. This is a nice feature to have. So this is what video looks like coming from the front camera on the iPad Pro. It can also get super wide. You're also hearing the microphone quality from the iPad Pro as well. And this is the video quality from the, sorry, one second. And this is what video from the new MacBook Pro's webcam looks like. And I think it looks pretty good. And it also sounds very good too. You're hearing the audio quality from the new upgraded microphones as well. Let me know what you think. For security, the MacBook does have a fast and very well placed Touch ID scanner. But since the MacBook does have that big notch up top, I was hoping we get Face ID just like the iPad because it just works. When you open the iPad, you're instantly logged in and it couldn't get much better than that. The iPad also of course does have that rear camera setup as well for taking photos if you really have to, taking ultra wide shots of rooms you want to decorate for example, and it's also good for augmented reality use cases as well. But the way I mostly use this camera setup is for scanning documents which is a great feature to have with the iPad Pro, especially when you take out the Apple Pencil and you can sign right away. The MacBook Pro of course doesn't directly have stylus support or all the good things that come with having a touchscreen like pinching and zooming, dragging and dropping, scrolling, but having a keyboard and trackpad built into the MacBook that is this good is a wonderful thing. 
The keyboard here is incredibly tactile and responsive. There's great key travel. It feels excellent to type on. Apple is not messing around here anymore. And the large trackpad makes it tough to use anything smaller after you get used to this. It's just so good. And all the natural touchscreen gestures you're used to, like pinching, zooming, scrolling, tapping, they transfer beautifully here too, so you're used to it immediately. That being said, while the Magic Keyboard does have a smaller trackpad and a much more tight, compact keyboard, it is still very, very good, especially for being this thin. At times I do wish the trackpad was a bit larger and the keyboard was a bit more spaced out and had function keys like the MacBook does, but it's still very good and over a year later using the Magic Keyboard on the daily, I've had no complaints. The travel is solid, the way iPadOS handles the cursor is still one of the coolest things Apple has done, and it's very well implemented. I honestly wish they'd bring this cursor to the Mac, it's sick. The MacBook does have a really big lead though, with ports. On one side there's a full HDMI port, Thunderbolt 4, and an SD card slot. The other side has a MagSafe port to use with the new MagSafe charger, there's two more Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a headphone jack. While the iPad has one Thunderbolt 4 port and a USB-C port on the Magic Keyboard solely for charging. You can also plug in a whole bunch of super high-res displays into the MacBook Pro's ports and expand or mirror your desktop. While the iPad Pro does also let you plug in a display, but at least with this version of iPadOS, it just pretty much mirrors your screen for almost everything. Some apps do support external displays better, but in most cases, it's just a completely direct mirror with black bars on the side. Not a great experience. So at this point, the MacBook Pro and the iPad Pro have their own strengths and weaknesses, things they're good at and things they're really not so good at. But let's talk about software. The individual software experiences between these two machines can push you in one direction or the other. So first off, macOS is of course a desktop operating system, and that brings along a much better file system, more options for customization, the top menu bar, support for basically any desktop and Mac compatible app, it's compatible with more file types, there's better multitasking and window support, it's a desktop system, I could go on and on, you know what it offers. A lot of stuff. While the iPad Pro does take some adjustment, it has gotten much better over the last few years, but it can still be a bit limited for certain tasks. The Files app is okay, it's gotten better and better, but it doesn't give you that much information, it can't open certain files, and you can't really customize iPadOS that much beyond your wallpaper, icon placement, and widgets, which the Mac kind of has, but not on your desktop, they're in this kind of side pane. I'm a big iPad user, so I know how to use multitasking effectively on the iPad, but for a lot of people, it will take some adjustment to get used to and use in your daily work. It can be very limiting at times, especially for research projects, working on multiple documents or projects at once, looking at a lot of web pages. It's like having your desktop apps in full screen only. But the other big thing is software support. Despite both these devices having Apple silicon processors inside, M1 Pro and Macs in the MacBook and M1 in the iPad, they can't run apps across platforms completely. Now, some iPad apps from Apple and third parties are available on the Mac, and some Mac apps are available on the iPad, kinda. But for more intensive Pro apps, at least right now, like Final Cut, the full version of Photoshop, Premiere, Logic, many coding apps, certain design apps, high-end games, and more, are just not on the iPad in any capacity. There are of course many great alternatives for the iPad to replace those Pro Mac apps like LumaFusion, to replace Final Cut or Premiere, Affinity's excellent lineup of design apps to replace many of Adobe's apps, but if you're a creator you know as good as those replacement apps are, they're always missing like one or two or many features that prevent you from switching to the iPad from the Mac completely. For certain projects, it is completely possible though to go iPad only, and I've done it many many times, it is very much doable. But often enough for work or school, you need a very specific piece of software that's only available on a desktop computer. But this app exclusivity isn't one-sided. The iPad Pro also has its own exclusive apps, many of which benefit from the Apple Pencil. Procreate, which I use for drawing wallpapers, mockups, and other art, is indispensable for me. Notability is incredible for writing out notes or brainstorming. Signing documents and sketching images with the pencil is also a great feature. Having that pencil support with the iPad Pro is an incredible thing. You don't have to buy a Wacom tablet or some weird stylus, it just works on the iPad. The pencil is always there, ready to go, always charged. It's awesome. While the software experiences between these devices are very different, there are ways that iPadOS and macOS can actually work together. 
With Sidecar, the iPad can become a second display for the MacBook, so you can essentially use the pencil to draw on the MacBook, but through the iPad. There's universal control where you can drag and drop elements from one device to another. And of course, iCloud, so all of your files, photos, music, projects, and certain apps, reminders, appointments, and all of your communication is synced between devices. So things you do on your iPad will show up on your Mac and vice versa. Now with battery life, I'd say both these devices are actually quite similar with day-to-day -day usage. Using them on and off, replying to emails, watching a video here and there, maybe editing a photo, light work, they last a whole day, no problem. But if I'm editing a video or photos in either of these devices, the battery will drain a lot quicker, especially on full brightness. And sometimes I have to charge them around midday if I'm editing something super intensive, the brightness is on max, I'm doing a whole bunch of multitasking, it just depends on the task. And per user, the battery life will definitely differ depending on your work and your creative pursuits. The iPad can be easily charged with most small power adapters and battery packs without demanding too much power like the MacBook Pro does, but the Mac does have fast charging with their adapter as well as the convenience of MagSafe, so in this department, it's a bit of a tie. Okay, to conclude, in a perfect world, we'd all have both an iPad Pro and a MacBook Pro together. No decisions necessary, we just have both and it'd be amazing. The iPad and MacBook work exceptionally well by themselves and work incredibly well together. And depending on the work you do, having both would be an awesome thing. They are amazing tools. But in most cases, you're buying one or the other. So how do you decide? Well, I'll make it easy. If there's a certain piece of software you need that's only available on macOS or iPadOS with no alternatives available, then your decision is already made. Get the device that runs the software you need, and that's it. If specific accessories or hardware only works with one of these devices, then your decision is also pretty easy. If you value ports, compatibility, and the power to use your computer as a desktop style system or a portable laptop system, then go MacBook. But if you're stuck in the middle, you're down to try something new, definitely give the iPad a shot. It's a whole new experience, it's an incredible experience, and I use my iPad for almost all of my day-to-day -day work without any complaints. But on the other hand, the new MacBook Pro is everything we've wanted from a laptop from Apple for a few years now. It has all the ports, all the power, a beautiful display, a beautiful design. It is really the dream laptop. It does cost more than the iPad, but you can do more on the MacBook. But in the end, the MacBook Pro and iPad Pro are both tools. One isn't better than the other. Whichever one helps you with your creative work or the one that you enjoy using the most is the right one for you. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes about all the creative skills you've always been interested in learning. There are classes about design, photography, illustration, animation, productivity, marketing, video editing, and so much more. It's all on Skillshare and taught by creative professionals with engaging, entertaining classes and real life projects you can actually practice the skills you learn. And there are plenty of excellent classes like this one from the man himself, the legend, MKBHD. He has a class all about being a YouTuber, running a business, and creating stellar videos. It's an amazing and entertaining class. I've been a YouTuber for many years now and I still learned quite a bit from Marquez and his awesome class. The first 1,000 people who join Skillshare with my link in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, so you can explore your creativity today. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So that's the MacBook Pro versus the iPad Pro. Similar in many ways, very different in others. I wanna hear your thoughts on these devices in the comments down below, and let me know which one you'd personally choose. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.